Um, Steve, let's turn to The Voice. There is a lot of uncertainty around it, but Labor says that it is beginning the formal process to secure a treaty and truth-telling mechanism in the next few weeks. What do you think of where this is up to at the moment? What are your thoughts? Have they got the model right? Does more work need to be done? A lot more work needs to be done. And when you hear the word treaty, that's when you start to need to get a lot more detail. Now, uh, as a resident of Victoria, I can tell you the Victorian government is already a long way down the road to striking a treaty deal in Victoria with Indigenous Victorians. That's going to happen, and it's, all it, it's a long way down the track. Dan Andrews won the election just a couple of months back. He's got the confidence that he can pull this treaty idea off. I think it'll scare wider Australians when you start talking about a treaty. I mean, Shari, has anyone ever explained what that actually means? I mean, if the voice referendum gets up, I think Anthony Albanese at the press club today made it clear that that's the next move. You go from from the voice being enshrined in the Constitution and then bargaining point number two is a treaty. What does that mean? Does that mean reparation for Indigenous people around Australia? I think you only need to look at places like Canada and New Zealand, and that'll give you some idea, New Zealand particularly, on what a treaty means. The Maori in New Zealand have been given huge rights over things like fishing grounds, rivers and water. Uh, it's going to happen here if we have a treaty, and I think there's no doubt. Anthony Albanese said, OK, I want the voice during this term, but he left open the gate to some sort of a treaty beyond that. Yeah.